Hey guys, it's Maurice, and we're here with another episode review. I'm joined by Raiden. Hello. And Dan. Hi. Unfortunately, Unveiled Eyes couldn't make it, but he'll probably be back next week. What do you guys think of the episode, just off the top? I'm not sure. Like, I understand that nothing plot-wise really happened, but it was still pretty cool. Agreed. I don't like Sun's semblance at all. <laughs> I feel like it's copying a certain you-know-who that already has a similar ability. In fairness, I think it's supposed to be referencing the whole Monkey King making clones out of his hair deal, I guess. Yeah, but they already have a clone user, and if if everyone has, if you can have more than one sandwich from a person, like it was supposed to be unique for a while at least, until later when you you've used enough abilities you can reuse a couple. But this is like season two, and they're already reusing semblances. Oh yeah, well, that's true. I mean, they use them in different ways. Blake's kind of like a faint distraction sort of thing, and Sun just uses it to straight up attack, I guess. Yeah, but I'm not, I'm not sure how I feel about that. <laughs> All right. So let's see. Yes. Uh, we continue off from like the last episode with uh, Penny and Ruby. Like Penny reveals she's the first synthetic person of capable of generating an aura and that um yeah it's, it's... not surprising i already knew that though <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah that's like the terminology and she confirmed that you know general iron was involved with their development the obvious as that is and that he he was also mentioning like something going down soon to her before she gets cut off and um, again she every it seems I didn't get to uh, point it out so they got cut off last time or like dropped last time but every time Penny lies she hiccups yeah that's like a Pinocchio yeah. thing yeah I'm sure it's, it's kind of funny now a little bit but it'll get annoying real quick if they keep that up so then we see Yang and Neptune go to the club from um, Yellow Trailer. Also, I wouldn't be surprised if they know that she does that. Like, I feel like that's an intentional thing they did. What is? The hiccup thing. Yeah, I think it's intentional. Because like, she's a robot, also. so like, you don't just, they don't just develop that themselves. They exactly. probably put that in there specifically to tell when she's lying to you. Mm-hmm. I guess it's um, the closer, the higher-ups are... Would know it easier because the cops didn't even like care. <laughs> well, they're they're probably under orders not to care. Yeah. Oh yeah, I also like how she never even explained why she ran <laughs> away <laughs> at all. Like I said, they're under orders not to care. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny when Yang went when, um, Yang went back into the club and <laughs> everybody just like freaked out. I know they still haven't gotten a new DJ table since the last time. <laughs> We need to hire some new DJs and get a new mix table. Some new sliders would be real. Probably help out business a lot. Well, on the, they're on the shady side of town, right? Probably, seeing as they're in a garage that looks like a chop shop. <laughs> so then, after right then after that, we transition to the White Fang meeting, and you can see like the three claw mark. Also, like, in case you didn't the watch the last episode to see the um. I mean, the last episode of the podcast to see the joke I made. Yang will take Miranda from Mass Effect, right? Oh, yeah, I, I saw that. that. I'm like, okay. I saw, the, <laughs> I, saw, I saw the comparison. Because, <laughs> like, I like their new get-ups for the most part. Like, I think they're all better than the originals in a lot of cases. And that's, that's not them being higher definition. So I hope we see them, like, switch back and forth a lot between the two. Yeah. Agreed. I was gonna say I um what well, they did a close up and showed it, but like the three clock mark on the wall to show like where their meetings would be the, for the White Fang, yeah. like as Blake was looking at it, and like we get an explanation for the masks being like grim masks as a symbol for um, which, humanity thinking of Faunus as monsters. It's a stupid decision. 
It's like, okay, you're just reinforcing it. And then when they're all racist towards Torchwick, it's like, yeah, I get it. You've been dealt some bad shit. But, like, you know, the whole thing is ending with the racism, not just kind of flipping it on them. <laughs> you're not going to gain any support by yelling at people. And I'm glad they changed Blake's ear color back to a more reasonable color. Did they make it? Did they make her ears like darker or something? Or no, remember the first season they were fucking purple. Like oh, the inside of her like, ears, like the inside of her fondest ears were purple, and now they're oh. like a grayish white. It's, it's like if you'll get a cat, it's probably gonna be like grayish white for like a black cat. Yeah. So it's much more like realistic, as much as I don't want to use that word. <laughs> so then you get into whole arguments about like oh, where's real concern and blah blah. blah. I don't want to get into that. Yeah. So we get Torchwick explaining um, how their common enemies, like the government, the well, military, no, they're, they're schools, common the enemies. Those faunists are all just misguided and pissed off. Well, in his in his like speech to them, I mean. Yeah, but he's manipulating all of them. No, obviously. Like, they don't actually care about the government. They just want equal rights and to be like treated fairly. They like, they don't really care about that. Torchwick just being an asshole. Like I can use this. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, isn't the um the white thing currently still kind of doing that as well? Well, under him. Yeah, it's because they're because the leaders of that are stupid idiots too. Yeah. We also find out um, when he was like talking about their operation that they have one in the southeast of um, the region. I I didn't not really familiar with uh, which what areas in the southeast uh, though. I always look it up. I expect All a picture right. of the map on the overlay around this time. Oh yeah, cool. And then we transition to uh, Yang at the bar, and then they can't really get any information because. Junior just says that uh, Torchwick never came back, and he never saw his men shocker. come back. Huh? Yeah, shocker. <laughs> and then we transition back to the meeting, and Torchwick finally notices Blake and Son, because since it's kind of obvious, it's them. <laughs> I mean, to an extent, yeah, I, I agree with him being recognized, because Torchwick did see both of them. And yeah. they changed clothes, I th well, at least Blake did. And they put on, like, a partial face mask. Now, if they had done, like, I wish they, this is, I, I kind of called that when they were walking in, too. I was like, alright, you really should have done something like to disguise yourself a little bit more than, I'm going to put on a partial face mask. You'd like me taking off my glasses. It's like, you're, you're going to notice what I fucking am. <laughs> like, you need to do your hair different, put on different clothes, maybe some makeup or something like that. To cover your tracks a little bit more. And in a world where everyone's weapons are like signature custom design, change it up. Disguise the weapon. Hide it or something. Oh, yeah, that too. Do you notice one of the um, people in the uh, audience, like, for the masks, he had, the, he had his glasses on top of his mask? Yeah, I couldn't notice that. <laughs> I thought it was be fair, because masks are really hard to wear if you have glasses. Yeah. They're really annoying. You're going to have to pull it forward a little bit if you want to wear your glasses underneath, unless you actually put the lens in the eye slot. So, Blake shoots the lights out, and the epic chase starts. Yeah, well, also, chase, obviously... I would like, call that an epic chase. Well, obviously... A uh, moderately okay mention... chase, followed by a pretty decent fight. Well, yeah. I, I enjoyed it. That ended the talk I forgot... Wrap. Well, I forgot that um, to mention like he, we saw the, like the robot like from the same exact like from the trailer like how he revealed it, the White Fang version of well, it. What's the White Fang version? Well, White Fang. He just stole paint. it and put a decal on it. White Fang decal on it. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> also looked rusty. Also looked rusty for something that's supposed to be new. Yeah, that too. Yeah, he put the grime on there to make it look better. It, it, it increases morale. <laughs> I mean, in this case, it probably would, honestly, because, like, sure, if it's brand spanking new, I'm sure, every, like, all the regular civilians, like, oh, that's way cooler, because it's, like, it's brand new, but for, like, all of them, they, like, the people in the crowd want to know that that thing works, they want to know that it's going to help them, so if it's a little bit dirty, they will might they might think it's more tested and more used.
I didn't think of it that way. Well, apparently somebody did. I also liked how they they were using all the ship names for their weapon or for their combination attacks. Oh yeah, I wanted to, I was going to point yeah, point that out for each pair pair attack name. They would they would use the fan pairing. <laughs> That's fun. That was funny. And then Neo showed up. Also known as Haku of the Hidden Mist. And I'm not sure how I feel about that character. Wait, uh Oh yeah! Oh my gosh! Really? <laughs> In regards to? Um, no, I didn't. I didn't think of that either. But yeah, you're right. <laughs> In, In regards to the Haku statement or the? The Haku statement, yes. <laughs> but yeah, it's like subtract ice and you get Neo. Not to be confused yeah. with Neapolitan ice cream. But like, I don't know how. I feel like I like the character more if her hair wasn't so... If they didn't bring the, the the dual color thing into the hair. Like, if she had monocolor hair, I think I like her as a character a lot more so far. Given that we don't know anything about her as a person. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention, um... When they were... When, uh... <clears throat> Yang and Neptune went to back up uh, Blake and Sun while they were being chased... We have to see, like, Neptune uses, like, energy gun Slash thing, graphic. and then, like... Oh, I thought it was a trident. It, it, looked, it should be a um, trident, but I'm pretty sure it was actually, a, like, a halberd-looking thing. Because, like, at first it was like that, and then, like, when he, like, went to strike, it, like, split into three. Oh, did it? I saw it as yeah. a halberd when I looked at it. Though I guess I might have not been paying attention. No, because, like, at first it is. Oh, like yeah, the, good point. It, is, like, is, it did go into three, didn't it? Yeah, then it went into three as, in, as he struck him. And he then we got to see Sun's um, semblance where he did that energy clone He did, he did clone light clone, not, not to be confused with shadow clones. Yeah. <laughs> and then we find out that Yang carries a copy of the Saiyan handbook on her at all times. Wait, saying hamburger. You ever got that joke from the um the Bridge series, where whenever one of them almost dies and gets stronger as a result of it, they're like, "See, what you fail to realize in the Saiyan Handbook on Chapter Four, being near death makes you stronger." Uh, and they get uh, the shit out of the person. It's like near death massively increases your power level, <laughs> <laughs> which is basically what yes, Yang yes. does. Yeah, we find out that's her ability. The Saiyan ability. <laughs> oh, I wanted to also point out, like the uh, when they're in the music, when um, Son uses his semblance, they had like a little like, a new song coming out soon. Yeah, they had like uh, Chinese instruments in the song, like right during his part. Shocker! Like when he did. Yeah, I like. I kind of like that. And a lot of ice from Weiss this time in the fight. Not surprising, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like yeah, yeah. It'd be, I'd be more surprised if there was fire. We have... Oh, yeah, for the team... I was going to go over, like, some of the, like, the pairing names. They use, like, Freezer Burn, Weiss, and Yang. Like, do that ice, and uh, Yang does a fire punch to make a quick fog, which is... I thought that was cool. Uh, checkmate with Weiss and Blake. And I really like the cool like power up that Weiss gave to Blake. Oh, you mean you mean um becoming Neo? <laughs> <laughs> Ironic seeing yeah, to the character named Neo that shows up immediately afterwards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's like, all right, we'll give you the Neo bullet time ability. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, Ladybug, Ruby, and Blake. I think this is pretty much like when they do that, they're both utilizing both of their great speeds for it. Um, and like what we were talking about, Ruby reveals that Ying's power is basically a Saiyan power. And we see like her, like her eyes turn red and her hair glows like a super saiyan. <laughs> Except for the eye part, but you know, her hair glowing and everything. 
She blew off the Atlas's right arm like nothing. <laughs> I guess. Then the last two is uh, Bumblebee with Blake and Yang, and Yang hanging on to Blake's. I think. Would you say? Would you call that a ribbon? I guess. Uh. Or, might as well be. It's functionally a ribbon. Yeah. And then Ice Flower with Ruby and Weiss shooting like, uh, pretty much just shooting ice at the Atlas. Once again, they don't really use their guns for gun-like things a lot, which does and doesn't <laughs> bug me. Like, aren't um since a lot of the guns are like shooting dust, pretty much, right? Yeah, probably. Like, you could probably replace the gunpowder for dust. Yeah. Then we finally see the new character Neo. We also actually see her in the meeting, the White yeah. Fang meeting. Yeah, she went. She's like standing off to the left. And then we see her pretty much block um, Yang's shot right at uh, Torchwood. Oh, she's not a faunus, though. Oh, yeah, she's. I don't she's think she human. is either. Mm hmm. So she has like a brown and pink and white umbrella. Eyes, like brown and pink eyes. Brown and with pink, like, halves of hair. And then, like, she's embracing it too much. <laughs> um, in the scene in the meeting, both her eyes are brown. That that that's part sure of the inconsistency, though. Or it, could, I mean, it could yeah. be relevant to resemblance, but I noticed that as well. Yeah, there was. Like, and it'd be cool, and it'd be more tolerable if it was. Like what I'm thinking, if it is relative, you you like I, the way I'm pretty sure abilities work is it's like Haku's ice mirrors. There's a portal at one end and a portal at another end. And when she doesn't have any portals up, her both her eyes are brown. And then when one portal's up, one will become pr pink. Whoa. Whoa. That'd be a really cool way to work it out. Yeah. Because then it's, yeah. like, it's like a tell for her ability. It's like, okay, she has a portal up somewhere. Because her one of her eyes is pink. Okay, she just used it. Let's assume it goes away for whatever reason. Or she gets rid of it. Now both her eyes are brown again. It's like, okay, she's not being able to teleport away from this now. Et cetera, et cetera. It'd be like a cool tell. Yeah, that would be cool. And it explained that her eyes changed colors from one scene to another. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that makes sense in, in the meeting, she wouldn't really need to have it up at all. Which shows she's not a professional. <laughs> it's like, I'd have that shit up constantly if I, if I need to. <laughs> it, could be it could be draining. It could be, but... If I'm going into a room with a bunch of people who hate my race just because they're my race, I'd have a portal up back. If I had a portal ability, I'd have a fucking portal up somewhere else. <laughs> I don't care if I'm going in to be their leader. I'm still going to have one just for safety's sake. I'm wondering if, so, maybe she like the, would be like the fourth member for Team Senator, I guess. I guess a functional person, because I don't think... Torture could be at the other three pre people. Uh, Honestly, and... I'm kind of glad Neo showed oh, up though, because so. otherwise they would have had to have captured Torchwick. There would have been no other way yeah. for him to get away. Like it would have been bullshit if they tried to do the thing again. But the thing is, like, okay, <laughs> he just took out the mech. He either needs to get captured or teleported away. They have a teleporty person now, so they can do that. But if he didn't get captured and she never showed up, then that would have been bullshit. So it's alright. He get it captured <laughs> or teleporting away. And they just if you got captured, I've been like, why the hell did you even try <laughs> to like chase after that? Well, because maps are a thing, and apparently they're not nearly as good as Team Ruby. Plus Sun and Wukong, or plus Sun and Neptune for a short period of time. They didn't get my son. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I wanted to say the, the funny ending with them just at the. I like a little. I guess a ramen shop kind of thing. Like, uh, it was a called simple walk a simple into, walk yeah. noodle house. And it was the same shopkeeper from the From Dust Till Dawn shop. Yeah, he's got to have side businesses. He's expanding his business opportunities, diversifying his investments. I'm wondering if he's going to be, um, if that's going to be like a running joke for different stores. If you just, <laughs> you just see him. Who knows, maybe he closed down the From Dust Till Dawn. We don't we don't know that whether he did or not. He got scarred. He got scarred by Penny. <laughs> or he just got robbed and beat up twice. Or three times. <laughs> yeah, that was a, that was a 
interesting thing for um, guessing about Neo's thing because I wasn't really sure. You should. She just blocked Yang pretty well. I wonder, like, I wonder, like how what uh, offensive ability she has. Ice needles. Well, the umbrella's probably <laughs> a gun. Uh, yeah. But I feel like the umbrella gun is kind of unoriginal. I mean, not for the show, which is why I let it slide, but, like, umbrella guns exist. Wait, like, in real life? Wait, like, yeah. in real life? You can get an oh. umbrella gun and a cane gun in real life. Like, they're not necessarily the most legal thing in the world, but you can get a permit. Oh, was not aware. They've been around since, like, nah, what, what century is it? Like, a century ago. <laughs> like, not necessarily, like, medieval, but, like, when guns came out, they were a thing. For old people. Back when walking sticks mm -hmm. were more common then too. I mean, Torture Girl already has a cane gun. Yeah, and now she has an umbrella gun, I guess. Yeah, I think I saw like a hole in it is. for a barrel. Yeah, I think I saw that. Now what's but... gonna be really cool is if also on the tip of each of those like support arms in the umbrella, it's a second gun. So she can do like this weird spinny like... thing and gunshot behind you or in front of you or to all your sides. Most directional gunshot. So, what do you think about her being like a fourth person for like Team Cinder? Let's look at it'd be fourth people. What will the we have Cinder, Mercury, Emerald, and uh, Neo? What 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 letters do those yeah. again? Uh, let's see, C M N E. I think I can come up with a way to phrase that without using the word semen. I guess that could be a team name. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would probably be the biggest issue. Is that the easiest acronym for a team comprised of Cinder, Mercury, Neo, and Emerald would be semen. <laughs> I certainly could find something else that would be an interesting team. That would be fair, we really don't know anything about any of them. Yeah, we don't really know too much yet. So next episode we'll probably have Ozpin talking to everybody about attacking an Elysium Paladin and destroying one. <laughs> and being like, good job. But now I need you to know what the fuck you were doing <laughs> and why you didn't tell me about it first. And there will probably be a decent slap on the wrist for that. And then Ironwood will probably be like, those fuckers took one of my goddamn paladins and they're causing public outcry around my new machine. And then he'll also probably get introduced to Team Ruby. Because of that. So like, it's you ladies bitch slapped my robot. Yo, you guys obliterated my robot. <laughs> also, you're manipulating my not daughter. My robot, my my robot no. niece. You're you're a bad influence yeah, niece, on her. Yeah. <laughs> Although he might be more subtle and not mention that. Though Rui might also yeah, be a probably. blundering idiot and completely mention it, <laughs> and bring it up for him. I don't think Ruby's too much of an idiot. I think you guys little. But, all right, little idiot would be the wrong word, but naive is definitely the correct word. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I and agree not with the you most there. subtle person. <laughs> Not the only one that's subtle is Blake, and occasionally when she's talking to her parents twice, but like for the most part, none of them are really subtle. As the trailer is definitely mentioned, <laughs> given the <laughs> fact that Yang is raided a nightclub twice, when walking in and saying hi would have been completely appropriate, or work or gotten a similar outcome. In the episode, Blake mentions um. The founder of the White Fang, like being like dark, like to Sun. Being what now? Um, oh, being like kind of dark when Sun comments that like it was kind of dark to use masks. Well, that's not the founder. That's just the current but leader. I, yeah, I can't remember what what was the information about the founder, not the current one, but the original guy, the founder. So it was, they did something in Volume One about it, but I can't remember at all. I think Blake explained it. Probably. But... Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. 
Uh, I don't know. I like I like the like the more action. I just like I the least. plot. I like the, the funny ending. I kept laughing. I, I, I laughed so hard at, at the end when they're like, "Where's Neptune and Sun?" and they're just eating. Well, I already <laughs> asked that question. It's like, okay, where are you guys? Like, you clearly ditched them because <laughs> Weiss got Robo punched <laughs> through a highway support and got up just fine. And those guys hit each other. They fell off a car. It's like, okay, you guys can get up from that. It's not like a, a serious injury. And oh my gosh, that um, paladin took out so many cars. <laughs> oh legit. Oh, legit. Yeah. <laughs> All the civilian casualties. I guess. Like, I feel like the Vale should have a bigger or a better public transportation system. Wait, better than I feel highways? Like they should, yeah. Uh, what would what would you suggest as an alternative? Right? Oh yeah, true. Someone's driven launching stations for the slightly more bold. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it would have to be like a, a huntress. Uh, yeah, a, like a huntress to be able to do that. So it would be like a really smaller percentage of the population. Like, uh, like hunter slash huntress transportation from one side of the city to another. He's like those launch pads at Beacon, and then there's someone on the receiving end to like slow you down. Oh yeah, yeah. Maybe you walk away from one end of the city to the other, or other strategic locations. It'll be fun too. It'll be fun too. I'm sure it gets boring after a while, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> yeah right. Yeah. And then it's trading. <laughs> Me, damn it, Nora! <laughs> Wait, did you guys notice for some of the uh, generic characters that some of them? Um, I noticed some of them like read Nora. <laughs> but yeah, they reuse assets. From well, they can only have so many unique like, people. Least... Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's really yeah. annoying to try and do otherwise. Now I'm just pointing it out. So it's like it's. I like it more than the black people, but I feel like that was an art style choice. So I didn't really care about it to begin with. Racist. <laughs> I was like how me and Blake said no. Like just just no immediately in like complete synchronization in this episode. When Blake made her shitty joke. Or yeah, Weiss. When Weiss? Oh you said in synchronization no, with, with Blake. me? No, Blake didn't say anything. No, she just like, walked no, away as soon as that. Um, I, 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 I could have sworn that. it was Blake, but I could be wrong. Cause she just, cause I think I remember seeing Blake. She didn't want to say I'm anything sure she to that. <laughs> and then walked away. And then Yang said something about like, no. And then White was like, "What? I thought this is for jokes. It's not like an appropriate time for jokes. No, it's a great time for jokes. You just didn't do a good joke." And then Yang walked away. Wait, I don't remember Weiss getting punched through I, anything. I, I don't think she did. Oh. I was looking through. Oh my god, Yank can, oh can fucking take some damage. Holy well, shit. shit <laughs> What'd you expect? <laughs> fucking saw It's like they're cement. actually a pretty well rounded team expect. in terms of like an RTS or like a turn based strategy game. They've got the tank, they've got the caster, they've got the ninja, or they have like the, the rogue equivalent. And they have the uh, mm -hmm. the ranger, so they they've, they've covered all their bases for like a really good D and D team. Indeed, because yeah, Monty even said he he like he wanted to uh, to design like the the, the fighting yeah the like the balance of fighting dynamic for that as a uh, like a RTS uh, what he would want on a team. It's still RTS, probably more like turn based, but yeah, I misspoke when I said RTS. Uh, I think he yeah, said RPG. RPG is probably a lot better. R yeah, than RPG. Than more encompassing topic. Yeah, it's kind of like freaky what to is... me a little bit. I don't know. I said uh, Neo's a little freaky to me. To... 
In, for, uh, in what way? For some reason. Are you racing against like... a birth defect? Birth defects? Probably a birth defect, yes. I want to find out what, what the hell is up with that color scheme, well, too. <laughs> she's embracing her heterochromia. The dual Explain. eye thing. That's a legitimate condition that you can have in real life. Where your eyes are two different colors. I didn't mean her. You mean the eyes. fact that she embraces meant, like, it so heavily in that literally every other thing she wears is color coded against her eye color? Yes. Well, her hair. You could too. dye hair. So I'm assuming the hair is dyed after the eyes. It's like she dyed her hair to be that color with the eyes. Another cool idea would be, even though they probably wouldn't mention this, would be a, uh, a character with a birth defect that's human that gets treated, like, that's given a lot of shit for being a faunus, even though they're not. Yeah, See, there are several birth too. effects that give you similar qualities, not to an animal, but like that a person in a world where faunus exists would probably mistake you for a faunus. Uh, could you give some examples? I don't know a huge amount, but I know there's one birth defect that's really cool where you basically have elf ears. How they're all like, they're, they're all like, oh, yeah, that's like a legit like, thing point in the back, which is actually pretty kick ass. Wow. You know, like, obviously rare because it's a birth defect and stuff. But I could see like a character with something like that, but where it's so obvious to the point where it's like people who didn't know you would assume you're a faunus that'd be cool backstory stuff yeah oh yeah i just replayed this scene it, it was, was yang. yang yeah it was yang it was, it was just she was just more serious when she said it that's all her tone of voice and everything but yeah i also that's how i was um at the ending scene that's how i was able to like see that it was like more of a trident because you could see it inside the robot at first but like when they're eating, they have their weapons okay, out. Okay, still haven't form. Yeah, he just left it like that. So I'm glad we're getting more action this uh, season. Oh, did he get a ch to check the map for the um, the world map for Remnant or the southeast oh, part or whatever? Uh, I mean, there's probably nothing too too interesting there. Yeah, I just can't really remember which probably, city it was. We don't know the cities in that area. We just kind of know, like, the, the, we know the city itself. I thought we, it was like, we know each kingdom, and then we can kind of identify the main cities from each kingdom. Or the capital. Or some of the kingdoms right now. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. Let's see, southeast you were saying? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, damn it, gotta scroll down to the, the map. Or it's not. I mean, let me get a full version of this map. Final zoom the fuck in. <laughs> Nothing too, too interesting is in the southeast of the map. It looks like it could be, the further fall from the north, but that same color on the map it extends all the way around. So they could be doing something in the forever fall. Is that like a mainly grim area or something? No. It's the place where the train oh, is. Oh wait, that's the a forest? forest and the bees and. Okay. 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 Yeah, that place. The bear grim. Uh, yeah, sure. Or I think they call them yeah. ursas. Which basically it's a bear. I don't really have anything else. I don't think. You had a good prediction because I I don't I didn't really think of what was really happening next. But it makes more sense that they would have to actually at least like answer, have some sort of consequences for destroying a giant well, robot. Well, they're not being punished for it because it was in, it was it wasn't under the the military's control. It was a rogue unit that was yeah. captured by the enemy. So it's like okay, as a although you're not technically military or associated, you're training. You're basically in like. Spec Op Boot Camp. So we'll give you a pass if you take out rogue enemy vehicles without, without any major issues. And it's not like anyone, any civilians really saw them do it. So there's like plausible deniability of the fact that the civilian damage was caused, or like the infrastructure damage was caused by anything other than the enemy. <laughs> What about all the people that saw the robot like destroying exactly. all the cars? That was and all the end of me doing that. 
Like they what? can't blame it on the military. Um, yeah, and he said, um, enemy. and that's what you're sure to tell the military can blame on the enemy. And um, yeah, I feel like that looks bad for the military if your you, if your latest units are getting stolen already. Well, it's not, it's, it, no one's gonna care that they have not. They're gonna care that on one rampage through the city for a few minutes. Well, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I mean, that's why they would care if it was stolen, because so, the enemy can rampage and do that yeah, kind of damage. Yeah, like, oh, it was stolen by these dickheads, but we already had them in custody. Don't worry about them. That's what they, that's their own, they're going to speak. Probably. But yeah, Torchwick said he had, like, more. Uh, he could be bluffing. So. I'm sure he doesn't have jack shit. Cinder has them all, but how many does Cinder have is the issue, like... Yeah. Uh, Clearly, the Paladin wasn't going to be in mass production until the end of the year, basically. So, there could only be so many, and Cinder could only have gotten her hands on so many without being tracked or caught in any way. So, there's only so much they could have done. Yeah, Neo seems interesting. At least we got to see Neptune do something. And try and hit on Malachi and whatever other fucking chick, whatever their names are. You tried. <laughs> tried and failed in a not in a somehow not record breaking amount of time. You're like, what a woman to Yang! And then as soon and then one second later, is all as soon as she he ends that tries to hit on them. <laughs> well, I want he didn't say it in a good way. Like that's how I view that. I well, thought he I said mean, it in a good it way. It can be interpreted that way, but it's like it wasn't like. Oh my god, she's so amazing. It's kind of like, damn, she's she's that. But not necessarily amazingly that. I mean, I'm uh, sure he meant it that way, but it can be interpreted. It, it, yeah, interpreted. it can be interpreted that way. Mm -hmm. We still haven't seen Velvet's team yet. But we were running like, we're probably like half, not, not halfway. It's four episodes in. We're like a third of the way through the season, so eh. We'll have plenty of time. Wait, you think we'll have less episodes? I, I, I'm saying we're probably like a third way, because like, there's like 12 episodes probably in the season. I mean, how many, how many were there in the last season? 16, I think. Oh, well, alright. We're a fourth the way there. Yes. <laughs> so I'm glad we didn't have to wait like too long for like a little bit of action. Cause I always like it when they could... Uh, cause I, I like really the teamwork they were able to incorporate in the fight. I also like how I was on Reddit earlier, and I saw the funny thing of someone pointing out how... um. In the character development of Emerald between um, the, the preview, or her in that final episode of um, season one, and this episode now, her her top went way lower in season two than it did in season one. Like she had a full shirt on in um in the end of volume one. Yeah. And they were they were calling them out for that. It was pretty funny. <laughs> Just like yeah, character development between volume one and volume two. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> character. That's what we're gonna call it now. Character development. What did one of them make that excuse for her or something? Or? No, but I think that they were like, "Oh, we didn't fully introduce them in volume one because they were still developing their characters." It's what I think they were saying is about 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 like Emerald and them. So it's like, "Oh yeah, character development." <laughs> What's the joke they were making? <laughs> <laughs> Heavy quotation marks. Air quotes. <laughs> and was I forget was Cinder in that um, bullhead or whatever they're called at the end of the episode? No. It was just uh, Neo and uh, Torchwood. Okay, because I'm like, otherwise now everyone's seen them. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah, but that would have been a thing. It's like, all right, now everyone's seen Cinder. We can all know now. When um, Karina mentioned when Yang, when they uh. Neo blocks Yang's punch. It's like a greenish blue kind of like uh, shield kind of thing before it turns into glass. That could just be, um, what's it called? Uh, failing. What do you mean failing? Sorry. Like the, uh, <laughs> the what's it called? Um, activating the. The movement of the people from one point to another point, and someone's failing and breaking. But oh, wait, uh, oh, oh, so, okay, I see what you mean now. Like that when the when the glass stuff breaks, that's what it was kind of like failing and breaking, right? Yeah, I guess it's, I guess it's glass, but 
whatever it, the equivalent of whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I like the new song this episode. Mm-hmm. I think, I think Sun's part is just in the background music, and then like we got the new song when Yang started to um, fight back at the Paladin. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, so I was gonna ask you guys. I know from fairy tales, Yang's like Goldilocks. And Ruby's obviously like Red Riding Hood, but what about Weiss and Blake? I can check that real quick. Snow White could be Beauty and the Beast. Okay. So any predictions? I was pinning Ironwood. Well, I mean, like after that, because that's kind <laughs> of an obvious thing that would happen as a result of like them fighting and everything. Shit happens. <laughs> wonder how long the semester is going to be because I think in the first episode they said the tournament is going to start at the end of the semester yeah with the fair the first season was an entire semester too exactly so might see team cinder in classes and stuff or something with them yeah I don't think they go to classes <laughs> they just blow off classes <laughs> well they're not actually enrolled they probably just snuck on campus what is up with uh, Beacon Security? No, like, yeah, Beacon Security. Why would there be security? Everyone there is trained to fight. Oh, not security. What, what was I going to say? Um, it, it, the, the security is right there on a cliff. If you can get up the cliff, you can get on camp. <laughs> <laughs> Whether that means taking a ship or climbing, you can do it. <laughs> I just imagine Ruby shooting her way up. <laughs> But no, I mean, um, I can't remember the word, like, I don't know, background check, something about checking, because John made it well, in. Well, yeah, that, that, that's, for, that's for enrolling. Freaking Cinder and them got if they in. Don't, all they really need is a tailor and access up a mountain, and they can really just get on campus. And all, as, it's a big school, so as long as nobody really, as long as none of the higher-ups ask questions and, like, meet them and, like, get to talk to them, they're fine. It's not like they have security that we've seen. So is that. I guess I meant like kind of that encompassing um, having uh, something about like more of a discerning thing to not allow <laughs> the main villain to get in so easily. But they don't know he's the main villain. Well, I know they don't know that. Well, she. But I mean, you kind of know what I'm getting at, right? To an extent. So we'll definitely have to see like some of the other uh, teams and such for following episodes and everything. Like you guys already said, that you, they already like Velvet seems already confirmed to be shown in everything this season. And Monty was still teasing her weapon. She's a caster. Yeah, that'd be like some. Cool one thing or something, I don't know. I hope it's a quarter staff. How uh, long are those? A quarter. No. No, I said I hold on, I had to come back. Oh, okay. So, but you, did, did you hear that? Yeah, like a quarter of a tree, you said? Uh, it's called a quarter staff because it's made from a quarter of a part of a tree, and it's about six to nine feet long. Okay. Although, maybe a quarter staff's a bit too big then. Like, maybe I was thinking like a... Like, uh, maybe two, three feet. Yeah. I didn't think they'll find out about, um... You think they'll just, like, find out about Cinder and them, like, right as they do their plan or whatever? Um, I still don't know. Like, it's... It really depends on whether or not Cinder and them fuck up. Like, if they don't, then yes. But if they fuck up in any way, they're getting caught early. But yeah, unless that happens, I don't suspect anyone will get caught early. Yeah, because they made it so far, so. Yeah, that's my opinion, though. I think we should end on that then. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, right, wait, wait, Raiden, do you have anything? Um. <laughs> great answer, great answer. Yeah, I'm pretty sure next week's just going to be like a breather episode. Just dealing and with the in two more episodes, we'll be back on campus, and we'll all be in one room. We'll talk way easier and have way better quality. 
Yay. Alright, we're good? Uh, yep. sure. <laughs> so I guess we'll see you guys next week with the next episode. Hopefully with unveiled eyes. Probably. <laughs>